so there is a deliberate effort in tech to take infrastructure as a strategic um, you know, investment, but also to make sure that we invest in it because it becomes the lifeline of economic growth. Thirtieth November 1999, at the Sheikh Amri Abeid Stadium in Arusha, the presidents of the Republic of Kenya, Uganda, and the United Republic of Tanzania signed the treaty for the establishment of the East African Community. And on 7th July 2000, the treaty came into force. The republics of Burundi, Rwanda, and South Sudan were later admitted as new members of the community, increasing the membership from the original three to six partner states. The bloc is home to an estimated population of 177 million and a combined annual GDP of 193 billion US dollars as at the year 2019. The founders of the East African community envisioned a region that would grow to a prosperous, competitive, secure, stable and politically united community. 20 years later, true to their dreams and aspirations, East African community has made significant gains towards integration, widening and deepening cooperation among the partner states in various key spheres for their mutual benefit, thanks to the strong and dynamic leadership being provided by the Summit of the Heads of State. Today, East African community is the fastest growing regional economic bloc in Africa, with an expansive market, a hard-working and youthful population, enormous resources, including productive land, a vibrant tourism sector, rapid industrialization, an emerging oil and gas sector, precious minerals, and an attractive environment for investment. We engage based on four pillars of regional integration. The first pillar is customs union, the second one is the common market protocol, monetary union, and of course, political federation. But looking at the very specific issues in terms of why it is started to be one of the fastest growing, one is because of the resources that we have in the community in East Africa, natural resources, but also because of the fact that the economies of the East African community. Over the years, East African community has continued to improve facilitation of movement of persons as well as goods and services across the region. A total of 17 key priority infrastructure projects in the areas of transport, cross-border operations, energy and ICT aimed at deepening integration have been identified out of an approved set of 286 projects by the various ESC Heads of State Joint Retreats on infrastructure development and financing over the years, the most recent one being held in 2018. The total required investment to implement these projects was about uh, $78 billion for the next 10 years and beyond. I see this as a deliberate and strategic effort by the heads of states to make East Africa, within East Africa, partners within East Africa, very connected, interconnected, but also East Africa very much connected to the rest of the world. And the idea is that people should be able to move from wherever they are conveniently and reach their next destination with ease. You have seen in parts of other parts of the world where, for example, railway network is so convenient you live in one country, you work in the other, and because of the convenience of the networks, the railroad networks, you're able to move. So I see us, I would want to see a situation in the future where somebody should be able to work in Arusha, but you sleep in the evening in Dar es Salaam or in Nairobi, and you come in the morning to work. And that is possible if we continue committing ourselves towards connectivity. In support of the ESC trade agenda, a key priority has been modernization and expansion of key East African coastal ports of Mombasa and Dar es Salaam, where 90% of international trade volumes are transacted. In return, the efforts of reclaiming acres of sea area to build new baths, container loading yards and new terminals all together are playing a significant role in reducing the overall cost of doing business in the region and growth of cargo volumes. By 2012, the Islam port could only manage to handle 13 million tons a year. 
and that is stored capacity by then. But uh, within one decade, the modernization and expansion of the Resam port, for instance, has enabled it to go to ca the capacity of handling 30 million tons, which is over 130% increase within one decade, which is, I'm sure, one of the significant records across the globe. We didn't have a, a Roro terminal, which has just been recently uh, completed. Uh, in the recent, we had managed to handle a vessel that contained 3,743 vehicles, the biggest in the record. We managed to end it within 17 hours, which is an estimation of about uh, 220 vehicles per hour, which was not the case before we had this row row. In the past, we would, would end of such a vessel in, in five days or three days. Over the last five years, the Mombasa port cargo volume's throughput performance has steadily grown with a compound annual rate of 5.7% from 27.36 million tons in 2016 to 34.12 million tons in 2020. Transit has grown from 7.749 million tons in 2016 to 10.171 million tons in 2020. Railway lines have been revamped and built all the way to the ports to ensure seamless freight transport. Transporters from the republics of Burundi, Rwanda, South Sudan and Uganda don't have to travel to the coastal towns since they can now collect their cargo from preferred inland container depots. Embakasi and Naivasha for the Kenyan counterparts and for those using Dar es Salaam port, Isaka Inland Container Port Tanzania that is earmarked for expansion. So impressive are the returns from the previous port investments such that new international shipping lines are warming to do business with the EAC ports. With the region's economy still growing, there is cooperation towards investing in newer facilities in the port's infrastructure. Tanzania is undertaking modernization improvements on the Mtwara and Tanga ports. The first three baths at the Lamu port in Kenya that lies within the Lapsa Transit Corridor have since been commissioned. There is renewed focus in expanding inland ports with East African community inland waterways like the port of Bujumbura, Uvira port in Congo and Mpulungu port in Zambia. At the same time, East African community partner states have become more and more interconnected through regional rail and road infrastructure along the northern and central transport corridors, making it easier for business operators to transport goods across the borders. The community's East African Railways Master Plan is guiding the future development of the railway services in the region. If we adopted the railway systems as, and revived it and also implemented the master plan, we would grow our economies to a level of 7.5 to 8 percent per annum and this will change uh, what we call the per capita income of most of the East African uh, 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 member communities and uh, their, their people. Along the Northern Corridor, Kenya's Standard Gauge Railway, which is already operational, is proving to be a game-changer in addressing the transport challenges on movement of people and freight to landlocked neighbours like Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda and South Sudan. For SGR, it's much faster. Uh, also, I think uh, it's much cheaper because travelling from here to Mombasa using a bus, it's about 1800 bob, while using SGR it's 1000 bob. Now we're saving 800, it's a lot. I'm happy I'm going to celebrate my birthday at Mombasa and I chose SGR as my means of transport because one, it's secure, it's safe, it's convenient. I'm looking forward <laughs> to have a ride on it. Average transport costs for a 20-foot container from Mombasa to Kampala has fallen by about 30% from 2.9 US dollars per kilometer in 2010 to 2.1 US dollars per kilometer in 2020. And Mombasa to Kigali has reduced by about 50% 
from 3.9 US dollars per kilometer in 2010 to 2 US dollars per kilometer in 2020. While this is a substantial milestone, there is need to bring these costs of trade down further by way of extending the SGR to the borders of Uganda, South Sudan, and subsequently to Rwanda. From Mombasa to Juba, a 20-foot container, it used to cost 9,000 US dollars. Currently, given the infrastructure that the government with the development partner have put in place, the same container is 4,000 US dollars. So look at the cost now. And when you look at the time it used to take, it has reduced substantially. And you can see the growth in the business. Even the World Bank reports do appraise East Africa in terms of the investment in infrastructure, investment in the training of the people, of the officials, the, the business growth. The ongoing construction of the government-funded Tanzania Standard Gauge Railway, which is part of the region's central corridor, will be linking the country to the neighboring states of Uganda and Rwanda, and through these two, to Burundi and DRC Congo, as part of the East Africa Railway Master Plan. The objective is not only to revolutionize freight and passenger transport in the region, but also form a land bridge across the region with this 2,700-kilometer railway. One of the, the obstacles when it comes to trading within East Africa is actually the logistic part of it. You know, it's much more cheaper to get a container from China to Dar es Salaam than getting a container from here to Rwanda. That's really something, you know. So to make it much more easier for these countries to be able to do business within East Africa, but also improve the lives of people within East Africa. You know, as a country, we have to develop a much more reliable, efficient transport. If you go to the retailer, 40% of what you pay as a final consumer is 40% is for the logistic cost. So if you're able to cut maybe 50% or 40% of logistic cost, you improve a lot in terms of you know, uh, the price to the final consumer. With 80% of the project groundworks like carpeting, ditch works, bridges already complete, just like Kenya's SGR, the new railway is intended to replace the old insufficient meter gauge railway and decrease rail transport costs by 40% and reduce time and freight for cargo destined to neighboring states. Each freight train traveling at a speed of 120 km per hour is expected to transport up to 10,000 tons, equivalent to 500 trucks load at one trip. Upon completion, the Tanzanian SGR will be the longest rail network in Africa, domestically funded and harnessing 90% of local labor. Local communities are already benefiting from employment opportunities and transfer of skills from the lead contractor. Tunapata transfer of knowledge kutoka kwa wageni waliokuja katika mradi huu na wanatuhamishia sisi na kutufundisha vitu tofauti tofauti. Na baadhi ya locals ambao ni unskilled pia wanapata nafasi ya kuweza kujifunza kazi nyingi ambazo zinaendelea katika mradi huu hapa. Kwanza ni mradi pekee ambao una training ya umeme. Uganda Railways Corporation has embarked on an ambitious railroad revamping exercise in an effort to fast-track development and spur trade. The corporation has also relaunched cargo services to the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania following more than a decade of dormancy. Besides the northern and central corridors, also under development is the multimodal coastal corridor and the Lamu Port and Lamu South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Corridor and the North and South Power Transmission Corridor, the Lake Tanganyika, Lake Victoria, Lake Kivu and Kagera River encompassing the inland waterways. The intermodal strategy looks at how you can effectively utilize the different modes of transport and in this case uh, in the EAC we are looking at for example roads, railways and inland waterways. So for a normal trader who would wish to ship his goods or produce you know, to, to the market at the, the most cost-effective way. So he has options on how to get those goods to the market by picking or selecting what could be the most effective uh, uh, mode of transport. To further ease movements of persons and goods, 
enhance cross-border connectivity, improve trade and commercial activity on these corridors and improve citizens' urban mobility, several kilometers of new roads have been built with others being upgraded across the various partner states within the cities and across the borders. Hapo nyuma tulikuwa na shida sana kwa barabara lakini kwa sababu kuna barabara ilikuwa inatoka Voi mpaka Taveta ilikuwa mbaya sana. Na wakati niwekwa lami saa hii inakuwa tu ni 1 hour from Voi to Taveta. Alafu kama tungeweza barabara kutoka uh, Tanzania side mpaka Rusumu boda kama inaweza kutengenezwa vile hii ya Voi imetengenezwa kazi ingekuwa rahisi sana. So whenever then we have congestions, it means that the services and the goods cannot uh, you know, be transferred as efficiently as we like it to happen. So we have then people unnecessarily spending more time on the road uh, than would be efficient for us to be competitive. So I would say this, the basic thing about the road network and basically transport and communication is to render our economy more competitive uh, you know, compared to any other region in the world. And that is what we are endeavouring to do. We've implemented, for example, the Arusha Namanga Athi River Road Project, uh, which was the first multinational road project to be implemented in the region. We have had uh, a number of other multinational road projects which are under implementation. You have the Malindi to Bagamoyo Coastal Corridor uh, multinational road project, which is currently under construction. Uh, following the partner state securing funding from the African Development Bank and the European Union. We also have the uh, Central Corridor Multinational Road Project which links Tanzania and Burundi uh, coming from uh, Nyakanazi, Kasulu, Manyovu and all the way to Bujumbura. So these, these are road networks which are currently being implemented to ease the transport uh, or the movement of goods, services and people across the region. These are not only providing alternative transport routes and better access to seaports by landlocked countries, but also addressing the major cities traffic snarl-ups challenges and sparring innovation in urban transport. Lessons from the positive socio-economic impact of Tanzania's Dar es Salaam bus rapid transit system with Phase 1 now proceeding to Phase 2, first of kind in the region has motivated other partner states like Kenya to implement a similar model. Several modern ICT innovations like high-speed way-in-motion technology way bridges have been integrated along the major transit corridors and are saving drivers time, reducing truck turnaround times and also ensuring that the roads are properly maintained and offer return on investment in the long run. We control through fixed way bridges and through portable way bridges. We have around 55 fixed way bridges which every vehicle a transporter should pass through to measure whether it's within the, the limits of the, the loading. Beyond that, there are penalties. We have fixed the CCTVs in the 13 uh, way stations where we can see at the office or somewhere else through CCTV and see if there is any cheating. Where we have the static uh, way bridges, we have seen congestion reducing significantly and of course um, we are hoping that more and more drivers are going to comply because then we also have a more efficient way of um, ascertaining what is being transported across our roads. East African community continues to cooperate in implementing the East African Trade and Transport Facilitation Project, conceptualized in 2006 as a component of the ESC Infrastructure Development Program. The East African community has built one-stop border posts across the borders of partner states to ease cross-border travel and trade. Nationals of ESC partner states do not need visa while traveling to other partner states. The 11 out of 15 completed and operational one-stop border posts, or SBPs, along the various border points amongst the partner states, together with harmonized road transport regulations, have all eased movement of people, goods and services, thereby saving time, reducing transport costs, as envisaged in the East African Community Common Market Protocol. So, movement is easy to 
ma mofsa washuliki tena na kwenda kufanya manual kitambo tuko na tumia muda mrefu eh boda hiyo siku kama tano leo hii kuikaa sana ni siku tatu kabu mezidisha a day we quantify that you are losing 100 dollars a day so multiply by how many days so before the investment in infrastructure some of the clearance at the border would take maximum of seven days currently we are talking about hours a time, traffic and user satisfaction survey conducted in 2016 for the Holili border post recorded a border crossing time reduction of 90% from 22 hours in 2011 to 2 hours in 2016 for trucks and 89% for containerized cargo from 27 hours in 2011 to 2 hours in 2016. Similar efficiency improvements have been observed in other OSBPs. In 2009, that's about 12 years ago, the traffic at uh, the border was about um, an average of um, 75 trucks a day. Many years later, uh, this has grown about um, to 300 trucks a day. So that's about three times what it was uh, six years ago. Before there was a multiple declarations in terms of in the country where the goods are coming from or maybe it is a crossing and likewise when it arrives at the border it has also to undergo a fresh declaration. But now with automation within the region all our custom systems are interfaced. So this one they are talking, they are exchanging data. This has also relatively reduced a significant time, a clearance time as well as cost. Border authorities also attest the benefits, including meeting their revenue targets, less strenuous work conditions, and better clearance volumes. Integrating other infrastructure components within the transit corridors, including oil pipelines, air transport, telecommunication webs, and power generation and transmission lines, is providing an important appreciation of the integrated nature of the infrastructure sector in the region. The 300 million USD Rusumo hydropower project under construction at the Kagera River along the Rwanda-Tanzania border and approximately two kilometers downstream at a dry point where the two countries share a border with Burundi has an initial planned capacity installation of 80 megawatts upon completion. Moreover, the hydropower plant uh, will contribute to access of uh, too low cost electricity compared to the current um, sources we have, which include thermal power. And uh, those, uh, of course, are short term measures we use uh, to ensure we have sustainable uh, supply. So, the Rusumo is one of the East African uh, power pool project. So, we are going to pull that power uh, into the local people around. In Tanzania, the local people around in Rwanda, but also in Burundi. It gives us a very, big, very good lesson that we can implement such a project, an integrated project, which can also benefit the, 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 the all participants, and in this case, the three countries. The upcoming 1,445 kilometer long electrically heated ESC crude oil pipeline linking Hoima, Western Uganda, to the port of Tanga, Tanzania, will be the world's longest pipeline of its kind. Upon completion, it will transport 216,000 barrels of crude oil daily. Better infrastructure across the partner states means better access to markets by both small-scale and large-scale traders and availability of goods and services at affordable rates across the board to the ESC citizens. The only thing that makes a manufacturer survive today is ensuring that you're doing it at the most efficient levels possible. So if we have ease of movement across and we have our ports being very efficient, no you know, extraordinary costs that are being lumped onto the manufacturer, I mean, it means, you know, better returns for the manufacturers. It also means we can pass the same benefits on to our consumers. That will mean that volumes will also go up. If volumes go up, it means we employ more people within the, you know, factories. It means we have to pick more produce from the farmers. The success of Customs Union Protocol signed in March 2004 
with objective of promoting the free movement of goods in East Africa, builds on the same concept of integrated infrastructure and partner states' commitment to harmonizing regulations on non-trade tariff barriers. East African community partner states are also harmonizing mobile calling and data tariffs across the region under the EAC Roaming Framework or EAC One Network Area as directed by the Summit of EAC Heads of State. The East African Community Priority Infrastructure Projects provide an opportunity for development finance institutions and the private sector to participate and invest in sectors with strong government commitments for success with balanced risks and returns. While majority of these projects have been financed internally and externally, public-private partnerships and more funding from development partners will be key components to further the development of new, sustainable and competitive transport and trade infrastructure projects in the region. We just now progressed uh, to about 60 percent level on a, an, on a PPP project uh, going across the city of Nairobi, uh, which we call the Nairobi Expressway. And this is, will be a toll road, purely and totally financed uh, from private uh, uh, funds and the revenue uh, accruing to the developer, again, through cost recovery measures uh, in form of tolling. Beyond that, we have an, um, been piloting the annuity roads, where private sector members are able to bring on board their financing early, and so we accrue the benefits of uh, good road use, and then we'll pay this uh, money uh, over 10 years. There is a paradigm shift. The role of government is to create a conducive environment for business sector to drive growth. Now, what government does is to ensure that the institutions the legal framework are in place for private sector to do business. Both infrastructure, both business, it should be read by the private sector. Currently we have established a framework, our technical working group between the East African community and the East African Business Council, which is the apex body of the private sector in East Africa. And this network is meant to identify some gaps and see how we need to strengthen the role of private sector in engagements. During the pandemic, you saw deliberate effort by private sector working closely with governments to mitigate COVID, to respond to COVID. And if that partnership was not there, it would have been very difficult. But with private sector, then it became very easy to develop our partner states. We continue to cooperate with uh, other partner states on also improving our roads, the railway systems, the waterways, air transport. All this really to ensure that uh, we have smooth uh, movement of people and goods. It is because of this deliberate effort by the heads of state who think through infrastructure there will be accelerated efforts to develop our economies. In, the, in the East Africa. And therefore, in the next uh, couple of years, 20 years, I see a very connected East Africa. I see a, a, a East Africa that is very easy to move, to operate in, and an East Africa that is very developed. Possibly, almost all of it moving to the middle income level because of infrastructure development. While a lot has been accomplished over the years, funding gaps are evident and more still needs to be done in various spheres and support from development partners and public-private partnerships will be key to build more infrastructure. In the years ahead, East African community will continue to build on the progress made so far, guided by the ESC Vision 2050, where all citizens enjoy sustainable socio-economic growth poverty reduction, international and intra-regional trade facilitation, and deepened regional integration. East African community, one people, one destiny.